Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we have a guest post from Eric Wickstrom. He's gonna show us an introduction to the Reticulate script articulation management system for Reaper made by uh, Jason Tackaberry. Let's check it out. Hello and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to show you how you can use Reticulate in Reaper. So what is Reticulate? Well, Reticulate is a free articulation management system for Reaper, which can help you achieve a more realistic sound in your compositions. It's super easy to install Reticulate. Just go to reticulate.com and then follow the basic instructions there. I recommend you install it using Repack because then you can simply copy the link on the website and download it. To start Reticulate, you simply go to the action menu and show action list, or you press the question mark on your keyboard. Then you search for reticulate main in the filter and select reticulate main and then press run. So now we got the reticulate window open. But before we go into more detail, let's just have a listen at the sound the demos uh, which I've created here using reticulate. And this is just a very simple melody that's played with the French horn. And then if you look down here in the event list, you can see that there are different articulations and each of these trigger articulations of the specific patch. So if we have a look at the interface for Reticulate, you can see the different articulations that I have added. And if we play it, we can also see them being triggered here in the UI. So to get started, you have to create a track, of course, and then load an instrument of your choice. With the track selected, you then press add bank and then you have a drop down list where you can select some of the predefined patches and articulation setups. So if you have any of the cinematic series, Spitfire or Ver Harmonic, then there are some presets that you can use load and play uh, with the articulations already set up for you. However, if you don't see your VST pop up here, you can also go ahead and create a user defined one, which I have done here for the East West Symphonic Orchestra, which is the one I'm using in this video. So let's have a look at the articulation bank that I created for the French horns here. We select the track and then we press the pen icon on the UI window. You can now choose to show it in Explorer, open in default app or edit in Notepad. All right, so this is what a rebank file looks like. And I know it might look overwhelming and a bit scary, but trust me, it's actually not that complicated. Let me walk you through it. So the first row, we have G stands for group, and that's just a group. Uh, in this case, it's East West Symphonic Orchestra, but it can be Spitfire or whatever VST library that you are using. The N then stands for the name of the patch. So in this case, it's Six French Horn Master. Then with M, you can just specify a custom message that's going to be displayed by the track configuration, but that's just optional. Then we have bank followed by two numbers. And really the only thing you have to remember here is that the first number has to be lower than 64 because anything from 64 and upwards is reserved for factory banks. And we are creating a user bank here. And the second number is just between zero and 127 and you should be fine here as well. Also keep in mind that there cannot be two identical bank numbers within one rebank file. So here we have the group name and then we have the name of the patch again. Now let's have a look on the actual articulation triggering. So these two highlighted lines here, they create one articulation. In this case it's the sustain. The most important part of this is this one, the O note 24. So O stands for output. And that's basically what kind of output we are sending through this rebank file. And in our case, we are sending a note output. That's because this French horn patch that I'm using is triggering key switches using the keyboard and different notes on the keyboard. Triggering the sustain articulation is done by pressing down note 24. So that's what we have here. Output note 24. Down here is the name, the visible name that's going to show up in the UI. 
leaves us with C and I. C stands for color, so this is just the color of the button as it's showing in the UI. Here you can see the default color names, but you can also go ahead and predefine your own using hex color values. And I stands for icon, so this is what icon is going to show in the UI. Here I'm going with one of the default ones, and that's the sustain one. So let's have a look at the second line here, or the second articulation. We have a color, the color is legato dark, the icon again is a sustain icon, and the output is a note output, but in this case it's a note 25. We then increment the number here to 2, which specifies that this is the second articulation, and it's the mute sustain type, because that's what the note 25 is triggering on my patch. In the same manner, I continue to create three more articulations for sustain ACK, fourth piano, and sustain mellow. And again, you can see they are all note outputs. So let's have a listen to another example using the violins. So here in the event list you can see when they are triggered, the different articulations. So one interesting part with this articulation is that I also trigger CC values for different behaviors in the notes playing style. So here I have a short marcaccio violin section that sounds like this, followed by a lyrical legato. And the short notes and the legato ones are of course played in a different style. So I want to trigger that as well. And manually I can do that by pressing the legato button here in the interface and switching between repetition and legato. And the good news is I can also trigger this with reticulate. So again, let's open the rebank file and have a look on the violins articulation bank. The new thing here is this one. CC6864. So first we're triggering the key switch, which is note 28, and that's activating the lyrical legato. But then we also want to trigger the actual legato play mode in the UI. And that we can do by, in this case, triggering CC68. In this manner you can trigger any of the CC actions in your VST. You just have to know the CC number, basically. I'm doing the same thing here with the short patch. I'm triggering the key switch first with the note 39, and then I'm activating the short repetition by activating CC69, sending it the value 64, which means to put it on. All right, so that is how you actually create your own user bags. But how do you activate them in the event list? To activate them, you have to select the bank program select here from the event list. Then you double click in this area and you get this window here. First time you will have to load the actual rebank file, which contains all the preset articulations. So you locate the reticulate.rebank file, and now you can select the banks that you've created. And then you select which articulation. So let's go with Pizzicato. And now you can see the Pizzicato has been added here. All right, so here we want to trigger another articulation. Again, we just double click and select another one. So let's go with Sus Vibrato. And now again, we want to trigger the um, Pizzicato or maybe the short Marcaccio one. We just double click, Marcaccio short. And in this manner, you can just populate it with articulations and make your track sound really cool and hopefully a bit more realistic. So these are all very simple examples just to show you the basics, but Rearticulate is very powerful and you can use it to create very nice sounding stuff. Again, any note value can be triggered, any CC value can be triggered. You can even trigger multiple outputs by using a forward slash and then defining another output, maybe another CC. So I hope you learned something or at least just got familiar with the concept of using Reticulate. So thank you for watching and good luck with your music. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks to Eric for making this tutorial. And if you enjoyed the video today, uh, consider giving him a subscribe over on his YouTube channel. There will be a link down below. He's new to YouTube, but he's got a lot of great videos on composing using Reaper on his channel. So check it out. 
Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.